Now we are la 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 live. We are live. Hello, folks. Welcome to the House of Fun. La la live from la la land. La, from la la land. Yes, Indeed. exactly. Oh, it's more la la land than usual lately. Oh. With all the people telling us every night what they're going to promise us, they will do. Yes. <laughs> But I always say, hey, we say no politics. That's right. Keep out of that. You can't win. You no, lose you half the audience. Can't win that, I know. that one yeah. at all. So, uh, no, I'm learning to switch off the sound at night so I don't hear what they're all saying. Absolutely. Anyway, never mind about that. Today we've got a lovely guest, a lovely old friend, and Ruth will tell you some more about him. But I'm just going to uh, comment. Da -da 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 -da. All right. And without further ado, things okay. drop out of the ceiling. The crowd goes wild. For Marty Scott, who plays George in his fabulous band, The Liverpool the Legends. Legends. And here Hello, he is now. Marty. Hey, hi, girls. How's it going? Hi, how are you? Girls. What are you selling? Girls. <laughs> I mean, I call them as I see them. Where are, are you? Know. Where are you? I am in Venice, Florida, hanging out. Uh, we've been uh, doing a bunch of shows in Florida the last couple of weeks. Oh, and uh, so I was at the beach today, but I had to run back and talk to you guys, which is the most important. And then after this, I'm going back to the beach. Good for you. Weather decent. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely because most of the country is dreadful, isn't it? Yeah, we got lucky and we got out uh, just in time. But we're uh, this week we're heading uh, to Bowling Green, Kentucky, where it's still yeah. kind of cold there. Yeah. Uh, we're playing there Friday and then in Indiana or something on Saturday. So we're about we're about to head back into the tundra. So yeah. you know. oh, no. the tundra, yeah. I love it. Have to put your extra woolies on. Yeah, <laughs> right. I was trying to think about the first. I mean, we'll get into the whole the beginning of Liverpool Legends and Louise, dear, dear departed Lou Louise. Yeah. Um, how when did we all first meet? Do you remember? I was trying to figure out where that was. I was it when you I came out? Was it when you came out for the Grammys with Louise or? No. Um, I think before that, I think maybe didn't we do a show with a promoter like in in somewhere near L.A. or something? Or oh, right. we went time. to one of your shows, didn't we? La Mirada. Yeah. Yeah. Where we're playing again in August. Oh, good. Uh, which I just found out. So. Oh, good. Uh, Mm. Yeah. That's a great little theater. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, we don't get too much in, out into the West Coast, so I'm, we're going to start doing more shows out there okay. just so we can see you two. So <laughs> that's a big part of it. Yeah. Well, read, read Glick if you're watching or Kerry Dunn if you're watching. These guys are a must. They are the best uh, Beatles tribute band out wow. there. Thank I mean, you so much. You guys go all down into, I mean, not just the costumes and the music, but the instruments and the arrangements and all of that research you do, it's crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, we try to do as good as we can. We study a lot of films and all that stuff. Yes. And just like everyone else, I guess. But, you know, our show is a little different. It's narrated by Louise. So we have all these segments. You know, everybody yeah. knows Louise passed away last year. You got, of course, you know that. But uh, whoever else doesn't know that. So Louise passed away about a year ago today. Uh, but she's still a big part of our show. In, uh, yeah, oh, good. Which, That's nice. She's intertwined with all the little segments, yes, uh, oh. transitions and stuff, and we're kind of keeping her alive every day. It's, oh, that's it's lovely. Great. Good. Yeah. We're getting yeah. we're getting hellos from Charlie Walsh. Oh, I've just Charlie. Heard. Charlie. Okay. okay. I, I have to pause and say hi to Charlie because Charlie, you know, besides myself, was one of the closest people in the world to Louise and he, he helped big time when she yeah. moved down to Florida because Charlie lives in Florida and he's a Charlie's like family to me. So yeah. it's great. Um, it's yeah. Kid. Good to have you on here, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you could find us this time. I don't know what went wrong last time we tried to beam you in. And I hope I pronounce this right. Beth Orticelli says hi. That's my sister. So oh, she, yeah. hi, Beth. don't tell anyone though. And Mel, Mel Lennon Reed. Says Beth, hi. right now, is at the beach right now, uh, okay. having a pina colada, probably waiting for me. But I'll oh, be yeah. back, Beth. All right. Yeah. Matt, Mel is on, and yeah, all kinds of people. Oh, so. good. Uh, oh, Beth. Yeah, Beth. Hi, Mel. Oh, good. Beth. I know Mel. I know Mel. Yeah. yeah good there to see you go. You. Yeah. So, how did this all get started? Yeah. Well, how did you meet Louise in the first place? Um. Well, I think the band came before Louise, right? No, actually, no, the band know. came after. The band came after Louise. So I was uh singing at a, like a beetle convention in chicago and it was a couple months after george had passed away so yeah. way back in like 2001 and louise 
was there as like the guest of honor they brought her in and and it was literally a couple months after so i'm singing i was in a a group singing some george tunes and she well i I didn't even know she was going to be there when i found out she was going to be there i was freaking out you know being like hope i don't suck too bad and uh she uh you know she hadn't after the show the the promoter who was running the festival came up to me and was like oh mrs harrison would like to speak with you and i'm like oh crap okay (laughs) um you know i was i was it was i was nervous and and but she was like she hadn't really grieved for george yet and she you guys know her she was pretty spiritual so she thought like we were meant to meet each other and be a part of each other's life so we we ended up like hanging out it was like a three-day beetle festival thing and we ended up like hanging out that entire weekend her and i like drinking wine and it was and she told me all kinds of stories it was a great really surreal for me it was really you know she always she, used to say you know marty that she chose you to play george because she knew that george would approve she could feel it in her bones yeah she yeah she was pre- no she was pretty goofy but you know and it's just like it was the strangest craziest weekend and we ended up like literally like a week later she brought me to meet paul mccartney and i'm sitting on a couch between her and paul mccartney <laughs> and, yeah and it was like for 45 minutes and i'm still freaking out that i was with her at the time so it was and then really my life's never been the same since then it, yeah. that was just started like a whirlwind of crazy beetle land you know yes. yeah and, and, yeah and that's it we 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 became really close friends for a couple of years and like you know we became like family you know and yeah. you know i we had like a 20 year relationship or longer 20 oh, something long. i don't even know how long it was my longest female relationship with louise okay. and, uh, oh, well. <laughs> so no i mean she kind of became like my grandmother or maybe i was her mother sometimes i don't know in somewhere in between there yeah. and we after a couple of years we decided to put a show together and look you know i was in a different type of a group that wasn't not really like a production like we are now and louise wanted to be a part of something to yeah. to to yeah. maybe uh something that george would be proud of if he was yeah. looking down on it all and and that's how it started so we yeah we put the show together and then we ended up of all things getting an offer in a town called branson missouri which i had never even heard of at the time and Mm -hmm. but we went there and we started we got an offer and we it was right when we started and it was a really interesting time because right off the bat like we got a little blurb in rolling stone you know louise it was a weird thing that she was involved with us and and it was a pretty good door opener and mm. uh so we ended up in branson missouri playing like a theater like five nights a week for yeah. 10 months out of the year and we there we learned how to do a show because yes, you, I bet. you, you play like a thousand shows and yep. you start getting okay like you know if you it's like you're anything, too modest you're, you're too modest no i know but i mean if you That's shoot okay. like a million baskets you kind of yeah. get better at free throws and that, and that's how we learned how to that's where we kind of, it's kind of like our hamburg days like we we were doing yeah. a lot of shows and and we learned how to you know sort of do a production there and and now we're not there anymore we're just traveling full time right. uh, i think we're going back next summer to do a month with legends and concert which is a new thing for us which uh should be a lot of fun so we'll, in the month of june we'll be in branson for the whole month you know doing a bunch of shows what? but other than that we're just touring full time that's why we're going to come California and see That's you guys. Right. It's about time. Yes, people yeah. are asking. Yeah. People are asking in the chat. Um, first of all, Charlie Walsh wants to know: if, Are you anywhere near Delray Beach today? No, I'm in Venice. Venice. That's so right. I don't know where Delray Beach is. I thought that was in California. Um, uh, there's a Venice, there? California, right up the block here. Um, and we're in Playa Del Rey, so yeah. there's yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, of uh, he might be talking to you guys. Charlie, no, I'm in. I'm yeah. in Venice. No, know. he said, Marty, are you in Delray Beach today? Anyway, oh. um, and then somebody says, are you, do you have any New York, New Jersey plans for the band? Um, we're playing in upper state New York, like in May. Uh, and it's it's funny. It's an Elvis festival. And uh, 
Probably. It, it's it, yeah, it's really cool. We, there's an Elvis promoter that we've been doing these shows for years, where like they bring us in during the festival to do like one show that's not Elvis. So it's like us in a hundred Elvises. Just so it's super fun. I like it better than the Beatle festivals because we stick out like a sore thumb, you know. That's great. So, that's really good. And, and it's it's really strange. Like all these Elvises are everywhere because they do this big contest, but then they have Elvises that are like legit like the top ones in the world but everybody you know you walk into like the bar and everybody's like how you doing man you know there's just like elvis is classic that'll make some good tiktoks all elvis all the time except except when we're here and then us and it's great because we have to win the audience over and we always do you know there's a there's there's a contingent of elvis versus the beatles at least there was at one time that's getting less that way but there's some old hard hardcore Elvis fans that are looking at us like, but then by like the third song they're in, you know, so it's just, it's yeah. fun to convert them. I bet. Always a lot of fun. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, Megan Rock Radio uh, Pays is saying it'd be nice if Liverpool Legends could come to Delray Beach because that's where the Beatles on the Beach Festival is held. Oh, well, tell them ah. to invite us because I think they yeah. are having like Mickey Dolans, who's not even a Beatle at the beach. Just say yes. it. As, right, as much yes. as I love Mickey, I don't know yeah. who they have this year, but they haven't uh, ever asked us. I, I would oh, love to. Well. You know, well, Megan, well. we're we're doing next year. We plan on doing a a lot more shows in Florida because right. I'm getting tired of being cold. So <laughs> yes. it, we're going to be like snowbird beetles, and we're going to be in Florida. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, yeah. And anybody yeah. who wants to check, we're getting a lot of questions. What where where? Just go to LiverpoolLegends.com and look on the tour tab, and I'm sure it's all there. And Updated That's all the a pretty good name, right? The Snowbird Beetles. I might keep that. I know. That. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, what animal would you put on your crest, though? A snowbird or a beetle? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know. Our, the guy that we have that plays Paul named Dave, he's a bird. He's a birder. So oh, I'll have he? to ask him. Yeah, everywhere we go, he's off trying bird. to find birds oh, that are like lifetime birds that he hasn't got on his record. Or, and he's yeah. a photographer. So anyway. Ask- Ask him, ask, him. If he, ask him if he's a blackbirder, though. Ooh. A blackbirder? That might be even... Dad jokes. See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, I, saw, I saw. That's pretty sharp. Yeah, yeah. You know, we slide one in occasionally, as we as we are wont to do. Oh, my goodness. So how did you go about uh, casting for these fantastic three? So, I mean, we did some auditions, but it's a pretty small world of Beatle people. You know, yeah. like there's a... I mean, there's like a... There's some re- really good Beatle groups in the world. I mean, you guys know all of them, right? So, so, and the, we're all friends and we're all, but the internet has made it a real small world. So we started auditioning, but we didn't really have any luck. You know, we, we ended up like looking around and going like, where are the best Beatles? You know, sort of in, right. in the, in, like I said, the world, the internet makes it small. So we reached out, you know, so I, we, you know, we got a little blurb in Rolling Stone, okay? And it was funny because, you know, it said, the the the, ad, the article was like, George Harrison's sister to manage Beatle tribute group, which was all just a bit, like, Louise never managed us. She just, yeah. you know, it was a, it was yeah. just a bit, like, it started out like, I started, we put the show together and we didn't have any gigs. Nobody knew who we were. And I'm calling up places going like, hey, you know, we've got this new Beatle group and, We've got one guy from this group and one guy from this group and and yeah. we'd love to and they'd be like uh he's on the other line right now can uh we'll get back to you we'll so, call you never <laughs> right so i would the same person i i go hey lou call up this guy and tell him you're managing us you know right. and so she'd call the same guy and they'd go like hi. she'd be like hi, hello this is louise harrison and george harrison's sister and i have this new band and they Amazing. first they go like and then they go like oh uh hold on he just got off the other line you know yeah. <laughs> and then and she would yeah. get through and then it started that way sort of where and then it just snowballed into whatever it became and right. so i i forgot the darn question and what i sidetracked well, how, did you, how did you oh you know, so that, yeah so we, the other three guys so so we started getting some press and then you know i remember like for instance uh uh greg who uh are the drummer from he was in a group called 1964 and we met him when we were in england 
And I remember going like, man, that guy looks so much like Ringo. I used to get nervous around him, you know, because he just looked like Ringo. <laughs> oh. And uh, and I just, I, I didn't think he would join. You know, I called him. I'm like, hey, you know, would you be interested? And he was like, yeah. And uh, <laughs> next thing you know, he's flying to Branson and he bought a house there. And so that's how it started. That's and it was just kind of like that. We sort of picked who we wanted and everybody said yes. yes. You know, and then since then we've, you know, we've had a few different players over the years because we are all getting older and, you know, yes. it's tough being a 20 year old or 20 to 30 year old Beatle throughout our show. It's getting right. hard for me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, at the, and I suppose, I, the, uh, you know, the, the mathematical odds of keeping on finding left-handed poles gets harder. Yeah, that too. And luckily we found a guy who's, you know, in the, Beatles business like it is the groups out there there's a lot of Pauls that aren't left-handed and they switched and which is amazing yes. uh, but we found a guy who was actually left-handed who could sing super high and and there's a difference like if you're I'm say so I'm a left-handed actually and a lot of people don't know that but I play guitar righty I can't take credit because I've always played guitar righty I didn't even know you were supposed to play guitar play lefty if you're left I didn't know but but the lefty bass player really makes a difference because it's just there's a naturalness to it that yeah. isn't when somebody switches. It's I mean, listen, Paul was a really good bass player, like one of the best, the real Paul. And yeah. so when for somebody to switch, it's, it's really hard. And there's always just a little bit of a difference in some things yeah. that a natural lefty right. will have. So, well, yeah, we well, got lucky. I've yeah. said before in real in real life, Ringo's a lefty, but he's yeah. had to learn to play right-handed kits, right? So a exactly. But yeah. I think lefties just swing a little bit. I can't put my finger on yeah. it. There's no musical real explanation on a piece of paper for it. But you can. There's just a groove there. Well, if you're going to play a bass left-handed, it helps to be left-handed. That's really what it is. You know what I mean? Right. And, oh, and, yeah. and 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 Ringo, the same thing. Like to do ring. That's why it makes Ringo's really hard to duplicate. Because you have to do your rolls backwards because Ringo played a right-handed kit and led with his left hand. So yeah. if you're really going to do it, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you have to play a right-handed kit and lead with your left hand. It makes it really hard to get the little Ringo parts right, you yeah. know, which is all mess. things that we think about, you know. That must mess with your head, must not it? Yeah. Or does it, I mean, you don't have to, but if you you try to just – you know, you try to just dial it in the best you can, yeah. you know, and it, it's interesting. You watch other people and you try to figure out how ring, how those guys did it. And you, and you try to do it, you know? And how about, um, cause there are, you know, there are lots and lots of components to your show because it's, it's a serious production. You have audio visual, you have, you know, multimedia, you have video wall, you have all of that stuff. Um, how many people now does it take, apart from the four band, obviously, um, how many people does it take to put on that show? Because you've got a lot so of guitars. And we're, pretty scale, we're pretty scaled down. Like, like after 20, like after, during 2020, everything kind of changed for a little while. So when we started touring again, you know, we didn't want to fly. Everybody was kind of, we didn't know where the world was at. So we, yeah. we kind of changed everything. And I bought like a transit van, pulling a trailer. We all travel together. So it, the crew is smaller. And we just, we scaled it down to do the smallest amount of people to do the biggest production that we can. So we're literally a seven person crew. You know, we've got, there's four make-believe Beatles, which is normal. Right. Then we travel with a, 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 a fifth, side guy who's doing the strings and horns and on his keyboard right. his name's bob dobro he started the band with us he's been here forever he's kind of the star of the show from like the second half on because he's amazing and he does so much and then we tr we have two crew uh brett and stormy which do they do about 10 jobs yeah. like um, like stormy stormy is the stage manager she's the she does merch she does video wow she does she cuts my hair? She cuts our hair. She cuts wigs. She does. She's a. She does wow. many things. And then Brett is the production manager, and he drives the truck and trailer, and he does all the sound and advances all the shit. So they're doing like, wow. Yeah. Uh, they're, I I got lucky and and yeah. got the two great crew people. So we're a seven person operation, and that's 
that's what we're doing, you know, and it's, and then we all have to kind of do things ourselves right. too, but they do way more than we do. If that wow. makes any sense. That's you know? fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then where did you, did, did the same pay, person make all of your costumes or did you go to different people? No, um, no, different people. They, every, you know, there's, there's a few people in the world that make Sergeant Pepper suits and there's, you know, there was a guy named Russ Lease that made like uh, the, the, he owned like Paul Sullivan suits. So he started reproducing him, Sullivan, wow. selling them to all the Beatle groups. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's different. And then we found some, you know, a lot of it, it, it's changing now too, because since like the get back movie that opened up a whole bunch of new wardrobe too. Cause now yeah. like everybody's, yeah. Oh wow. George wore that. I got to find that those yeah. boots or what, you know, it's, we're always just trying to do different things. Um, but they, you know, come from a lot of different places, you know. There's, a, there's an so. amazing outfit uh, in Liverpool. They're online called Beatwear. Yeah, that's you know, where we buy our boots. The boots, you know? yeah. They're in Liverpool. But I don't think they're, I don't even think they're, last time I was in Liverpool, they weren't even open anymore. So I don't, I don't even know if they're they still moved, selling stuff. I think they moved you know? through the tunnel over to Wirral, I believe. Uh, and Maybe. they may. They may just be e-commerce now, but yeah, they make some incredible stuff. I, I was so excited when the last time we were doing a, a cruise ship, it was like we were on a Disney ship, which was their first inaugural cruise to Liverpool. So yeah. it was a transatlantic where we got on in like Nova Scotia and they <gasps> we we went all the way across to Liverpool. Wow. We were gonna be the first Disney ship, we were the first Disney ship in Liverpool, and you know, they had us playing as we're going into Liverpool, which was fun. And yeah. the, one of the main things I wanted to do was go to Beatwear. I was like, <laughs> gonna, and, and like I, I Googled it and I went there and it was like a closed factor. I was just like, oh, I was so bummed out because I wanted oh, to buy new boots and all that stuff. I'll get Ange but, to ask our friend Pete Price is friends with the guys that own it or used to own it. I'll yeah. get make it make a note, note to self. Yeah. Ask Pete yeah. Price if they've moved because I, I want to say they moved over to the Birkenhead side. Uh, yeah. why, why, I don't know. And then COVID happened. And so, you know, who mm. knows? Yeah. Who knows yeah. what? How long was the crossing from Canada to Liverpool? Like six days? Five I days? don't remember, but what I do remember is there was these crazy storms, and it was like a storm that they couldn't go around. It was like a thousand mile wide storm that we had to like go through, oh. and the whole ship was like oh. everybody was getting sick, but everywhere. And I slept like a big. I didn't get sick, and I slept better than I've ever slept. I was just like. I mean, all the cabinets in the, my room were going everywhere and things were flying. And I was just like, oh, I, was, I, I loved it. And it was one of my huh? favorite cruises. It was Brit Once we got there, it was the British Isles. You yeah, know? So right. it, it was amazing. Gives a, whole new, <laughs> gives a whole new meaning to rock and roll, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't do too many cruises, but sometimes like that, it's just fun. You get to, yeah. you know, you wake up and you're like in France or something and you go to yeah. lunch and it's, it's cool. Well, yeah, what I like about the, I, I haven't been on a cruise in a thousand years, but you, you know, I like the unpacked ones because I've done the musician on the road. <coughs> and every, every yeah. day, you you know, you unpack. log in, you log out, you check in, you check, you unpack, you pack, you, uh, you yeah. lose things, you leave your, you leave your charger in a hotel room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just that I left my computer cord in the last Airbnb. That's why um let's see what percentage I'm at right now. I don't know, but I think um uh, I'm at forty two percent. We're good. Uh if, if Marty suddenly <laughs> disappears, it's because he left his charger behind. If I do, I'm gonna call you on this and we'll, we'll <laughs> I got it all set up. I actually have you dialed into my phone already. So we'll see. Excellent. So how do you choose which <coughs> bless you, which songs for which uh, errors? It's pretty tough. And there's always somebody mad at us at every, you know what I mean? The Beatles have so many great songs yeah. and there's like, you know, there's a lot of songs in a show that I'm trying to do that you kind of have to play. Like yeah. Yeah. depending on where we're playing. I mean, if we're playing a Beatle convention, we can play all B sides and everybody loves it and it's cool. But yeah. for the main public people general. in the world, yeah. I usually judge by what my mom says. <laughs> oh, like yeah, if she right. goes like if she I says like a handle she, on the beginning she goes like what yeah. song was that i go like okay i should probably take it out of the show you know because she's been around the beatles a lot because i've been doing it a long time if she doesn't know a song it's like okay yeah it's probably not shouldn't be there so yeah. i you know so about 70 percent of our show is pretty much you know you got to play hey june you got to play i want to hold your hand you got to play right. she loves you and you got to play here comes the sun and something and 
luckily in our show we do a lot of george tunes because i make the set list so of right. course that so like out of all the and you know it's neat because louise was involved so it gave me i'm a ham anyway i probably would have done it anyway but it gave me a little like excuse why we should play as many george songs as john and Paul. Absolutely. Yes. there's a lot of people that aren't like that where the george guy gets a song and that's not oh. fair it's, yeah, I, it's funny because i can feel for the for george because yeah. george yeah. you know going back to my previous gigs in the beatle world you know yeah. george just like they'd give him a song an album yeah, yeah. by the end he was writing better songs than anybody so yeah. so, so you know so on every road he had here comes the sun and something the two best songs that i think you know so yeah. we do we're pretty even ringo gets a lot of songs in our show because I just think it's not necessarily, maybe it's not beatly correct. And in our show, I probably talk too much and I probably, I can't help it. But, you know, in this day and age, there's just as many Ringo fans as there are Paul fans, as there are John fans. So we kind of, it's another thing that's kind of different about our show is it's it's a pretty equal thing, you know. So like, basically, you know, when, when it comes to the Liverpool Legends song list, these are songs that your mother should know. Oh, oh you did it again, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> in it. In it. I'm but you know what? If, right? if we played that song, she'd go, I don't know that song. And I'd probably take it out of the show. <laughs> That's, that? funny. That's yeah. funny. I've got lots of people checking in. It was um, Jan Reynolds says it was fun meeting you guys in Branson. You guys were great. Karen. Well, thanks, Jan. Karen is with us from Edinburgh in Scotland saying what a great job slash life you have. Yeah. Apart from the, that, uh, that is true. And I wait, Karen, 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 Karen I have to say, we were talking about this the other day, like me and the guy who plays John Lennon, who is, I've got a, you know, a new a young kid playing John and he's Give great. Him a name, and name check. What's his, his name? name's Joe Manrique. And okay. uh, he's great. And we were talking about like the jobs that we have and it's like, how many people in the entire planet like have are like yeah uh a make-believe john lennon or yeah. george whatever for like their life uh yeah. and you know for their living and for their yeah. existence yeah. yeah how many and i mean there's 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 some really good beetle bands in the world in beetle shows but still right is there how many guys are doing it full time for right. in like absorbing them their life into it maybe Absolutely. 10 i mean there might be hundreds of groups with, but i mean with all the time with maybe 20 so yeah. what other job what other job in the or career in the world you know like this guy's 27 he could probably do it another 40 years or something yeah. crazy yeah. and like how many how many jobs in the world are there like 10 people yeah. in the world or 20 or whatever it is Right. It's still even what what else, I mean, how you many marine you, biologists are there? there that's a weird thousands. job, but there's probably like a thousands. Thousands and thousands. How yeah. many how many make believe John Lennons are there that are full time yeah. career thing? Yeah. You can I can fit. count them. I can you count can, them. And I, we know them all. They're all our friends, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's like it's just such an odd thing. You could you fit know? all of you but, all of all of you on one jumbo jet. Let's put it that way. Exactly. And it would be a fun party if we were all fighting speaking, or something but speaking, we, of, <laughs> speaking of jumbo jets how did you get your huge what has now become enormous um connections in mexico you play to like twenty five thousand people there don't you um so we the first time in mexico we sold out a venue that was eighteen thousand people wow. and it honestly it was just we've been doing it for like 10 years and it's just kind of a fluke thing like we louise and i were on doing a tv morning news like in texas somewhere somewhere around the border i can't remember where but a guy called and he was like hey um you know uh, he was a radio station guy and he's like he, ha he had some stations in a whole bunch of stations in mexico but he also had some in like south texas and uh he was like hey we have ringo ringo's gonna be performing in mexico on this date and we were thinking like and they weren't promoting ringo show he was just advertising on all their radio stations and then they they said uh we thought maybe the next day we'd bring you guys in 
and uh, make it sort of like a Beatle week. And they brought like the artist from who did the Yellow Submarine drawings. I can't oh, yeah. remember his name, but he passed away. He was a super nice guy. Yeah, we did. And, uh, yeah, what's his name? Uh, he was a fantastic guy. But uh, anyway, they brought him and a couple other vendors. And anyway, Ringo, because this guy owned all the radio stations, we outsold Ringo by like 7,000 seats. Or so. We played like a... <laughs> We played a bigger venue and sold out, and it was just wow. We, were, we we had no idea. Like I, that first show, like I wasn't even paying attention. I just took the gig because I wanted to go to Mexico. Yeah, and I didn't even look at the venue. And wow. uh, a couple weeks out, I was like, oh, I wonder if that show is selling or what. We were just busy playing like in Branson or somewhere else. And I I remember going online and looking. I was like, I gotta check out this venue that we're playing. And I looked. And like the who was playing there that week. And I'm like, what the hell? Oh, and I just, it was shocking. And I was like, so, and then I, sometimes there's big venues and they rope off sections. Yeah. Or they have and, a club beside Yeah, or yeah. And I thought, well, maybe it's like that. And I called the promoter and I'm like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, what's, is that venue, you know, what's it about? And he's like, he's like, oh, it's doing really well. We're going to, looks like we're going to sell out. We've already sold like 16,000 seats. And I was just like, yeah. Okay. Well. So I mean, and so that's how it started, and we went there, and it just we blew the room up. You know, we just did what we normally do, which is like our yeah. show in Branson, and the right. place went insane. Yeah. And so the next nice. year we nice. did two shows, and wow. then the next year we did two more shows, and then the year after that we moved to this other venue called Auditorio yeah. Nacional, yeah. which yeah. is like the most it's one of the most prestigious venues in the world. It's like a if you look at like top venues in the world, it shows up like next to Carnegie Hall and all this stuff. Yeah. And Ooh. it's three times the size of Carnegie. That holds like 12,000. And so this year we're doing two nights. So mm. great. we sell 24,000. It's just crazy. There, in Mexico is such an interesting, there's so many Beatle. Like when we brought Louise there, there was a line around the venue to meet her. Like, wow. you know, to me, it's just like, great. like my grandmother's. We, You know, it's just odd to me, but people are all crying and they, they're just like want to meet her. And That's I was like, great. what? There, there's like the streets there. When we play there, there's about three blocks of bootleg Liverpool legends, every what? kind of merchandise that you could what? imagine, like oh, t-shirts and tour jack. They, these funny tour jackets, like it, they, cause they don't regulate it there. So there's literally tour jackets with our schedule, which will have oh. all our dates. And in the middle of the jacket, it'll say like, the Iowa Dental Association, or <laughs> just like they're they're just pulling like dates off our calendar. Oh, it's crazy. Hilarious. But and then they and they don't give us deals on anything. I'll be like, hey, this is my picture. Can I have a deal? And they'll be like, five hundred pesos <laughs> or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it, uh, if Joanna, that happened all the time, I'd be upset. But it's Joanna's, so cool. Joanna's just saying that um, the name we couldn't. Pull Ron up. Campbell. Ron yeah, Campbell. Ron Campbell. He Dear was a man. sweet guy. It was really yeah. neat. We actually did and, some uh, uh, some NFTs with him a couple. Yeah, years ago. and then do you guys know Scott? He's the guy. The he managed Ron, I think. Yes. And, and Scott, super single. awesome guy, Scott. It, yeah, yeah. He's, he's great. From, him and I are super close because yeah. we basically realized we have the same record collection. Like he ah. likes all the same kind of obscure pop bands that I love and stuff. Yeah. So me Scott, and Scott bonded. Yeah. Scott Siegelbaum is on the road with May Pang and her John yeah. and awesome photographs at the moment. That's right. She's That's just, right. Yeah, he told me that. Uh, New Orleans this week, and she's doing great stuff. You can find her schedule over at maypeng.com. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Keep the family yeah, together. He's great dude. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. Sure. So, um, what is next for you guys? You we're, we're just touring America, and then you're going back to Mexico. We we're going back to Mexico like the second week of April to do two shows at the Auditorio, which has been, like I said, those are. It's great. weird though. It's like. You know, you're a rock star for like, it's really neat because you can, I've always wondered my whole life, you, like you go to see like The Who or something or Paul and you look at these venues and go like, man, I wonder what that's like. It's just so, you know, yeah. and now we know what it's like. It's easier than anything. You, yeah. People are singing so loud before you even start that yeah. it like, it almost doesn't matter. It's so easy. It's harder for me to play in my living room for my my family and you yeah. know i can't i get nervous doing that mexico is so easy because it's like people are just in they, I, I was going to tell you so there they've had a radio the the biggest radio station in mexico 
has had a two hour Beatles show since like 1967 or something. Wow. There, there's nowhere, and that's what I think is a huge part of why there's so many Beatles fans in Mexico. Because what I mean, you know how it is here. There's like Breakfast with the Beatles on Sunday, and and, the, and now there's uh, you know the Beatles radio. But but in Mexico, it literally their biggest station. They have a two hour show that's been running since the 60s. Wow. So I think that's been a huge. Uh, our, and the the guy who was the DJ for all these years. He just passed away last year. He's wow. been a part of all our shows there. He was wow. good friends with Louise, and he just passed this year. So we're gonna do a little tribute to him there this year. Oh, that's but cool. uh, yeah, that's yeah. Nice. But somebody, it, it's a it's an interesting. Somebody country, somebody's you know? asking me to tell you. Sam is asking me to tell you the brisket's getting overcooked. <laughs> that, that's my brother-in-law. He's cooking in there. Oh, because <laughs> they go so well with pina coladas. That's right. Well, they're at the beach, so, you know, whatever. That's great. Yay. <laughs> well, I know your battery's running low <laughs> and your family's waiting for you. And um, just thank you so much for taking the time out. Sorry it was right in the middle of a busy day for you. And um, so, you know, you're... Uh, Don't you're apologize. It's awesome to see you guys. It's yeah, you, listen, you look, First of all, you both look like rock stars. And, Shut uh, up a minute. I'm talking. <laughs> We're we're gonna do something together in August of next year, everybody. Oh, okay. Me that's and these two good. girls, uh, <laughs> somewhere in California, around the LA area, uh, right. we're gonna do some okay. shows together with them. Because you guys have a you have a new book out, right? So oh yeah, you know. I've got a limerick book that's just out, and um, which is about the history of Liverpool and of course all its famous sons and their and just, families and hang wait, am I in the book? Well, you're yeah, not you're, from Liverpool. You're not born there. Oh, no, but you're in the one that's going to be mm -hmm. uh, going to be published. So yeah. we're, that's that's debuting at the Fest for Beetle fans, and our publisher Stephen Wilson will be there. So if anybody's going to Beetle Fest, go look for the Imagine and Wonder booth. And yeah, awesome. uh, but yeah. uh, I know you you know you haven't <clears throat> been involved with the show before, but nobody gets out without one of Angie's famous limericks, which I might have put a little help into myself this morning. Yeah. But um, do you want a drum roll? Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, Absolutely. One. Paul Moody's saying it's a great book. Thank you oh, very good. much. Oh, good. So and this you. one's for you, Paul, too. So a one, a two, two a three. We'd, we'd like, like to say thank you to Marty for coming, coming and joining our party. party. He, he plays George, George of the Fabs with three wonderful lads. lads. Go Don't and see them. them. They're quite a party. 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 I said, <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to put that on our website or something. I don't know. Put it in our show. I'll send it to you. We, we'll film it and send it to you. There yeah, you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. So kids, show, go, yeah. go visit liverpoollegends.com. Check okay. out everything that um, Marty and the boys are hey, doing. Hey, real, real quick, I just want to say thank you guys for being so kind to Louise always. she Aww. It means a lot. Like she, you know, she okay. didn't have too many uh, women friends. No, and she loved no. you. She loved you guys, and yeah. uh, she really did. And there's not too many people in my my world that I. She just always thought the world of you guys, and and I know that yeah, you guys were always super kind yeah. to her. So Likewise. it means um, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was. We, we both always would call a spade a spade or a bloody yeah. job. Or yeah, a you got you two are a lot alike. That's yeah. when I met you, I was like, wow, okay, I okay. get it. Yeah. Another it was, one. A, it was a familiar. Uh, yeah. There Felt you familiar. Go. So anyway, I can't wait to see you guys. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Give yeah. my love to the three lads. And we'll, as we like to say in Liverpool, we'll see you all of a sudden. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. All right. Kids. Bye now. Cheers. See you later.